Do we really believe that the gospel is our greatest need? Do we really believe that it's the church's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our nation's greatest need? Do we really believe that it is our world's greatest need? Do we really believe that? Or are we waiting for someone to ride in on a white horse who's not named Jesus? If we believe this, we will manifest that belief by preaching this gospel in which we have confidence. Pope Francis tells atheists to abide by their consciences and that God will forgive them if they behave morally and live according to their consciences. It is clear from his speech and writings that the Pope is more concerned with approval, control, and supremacy than with the gospel of Jesus Christ and heaven. In this video, a young, devastated, and grieving boy who lost his father, an atheist, asks Pope Francis if his father is in heaven, and the Pope Either he is not biblically knowledgeable enough, or he is just concerned with making the young boy feel better, assures the bereaved boy that his atheist father is in heaven because he was a good man. Poco tempo fa è mancato, viene a, a, è venuto a mancare mio papà. E lui era ateo, ma ci ha fatto battesare a tutti e quattro figli. Era un uomo bravo. E in cielo, papà? Che bello che un figlio dica del suo papà era bravo. Voi pensate che Dio sarebbe capace di lasciarlo lontano da te? Pensate quello? Ma forte, con coraggio. Dio abbandona i suoi figli? Dio abbandona i suoi figli quando sono bravi? Ecco, Emanuele, questa è la risposta. Dio sicuramente era fiero del tuo papà, perché è più facile, essendo credente, battesare i figli che essendo non credente, battesare. E sicuramente a Dio questo è piaciuto tanto. We must admit that responding to this boy's question necessitates the direction and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. If the Pope were a true follower of Jesus Christ, he would have focused on sharing the gospel with this young boy while also consoling him over his father's death. Giving people a false sense of security and hope is not the true gospel at all. The Bible makes it clear in John 3 verses 16 to 18 that those who believe in Jesus will have eternal life but those who did not believe will not have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Some Catholics contend that the Pope's remark does not represent the Catholic Church's position. That couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, the Pope is simply reiterating the Catholic Church's position, which is entrenched in the Vatican II document. Yeah, as a Jew, how does it feel that there are other religions that don't think you're getting into heaven? So let me ask you, what's the Catholic view on who gets into heaven and who doesn't? I feel like I lead a pretty good life, a very religiously based life in which I try to keep. So what's the Catholic view of me? Am I basically screwed here? No. The Catholic view, go back to uh, the Second Vatican Council, says it very clearly. I mean, Christ is the privileged route to salvation. I mean, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that we might find eternal life. So that's the, the privileged route. However, Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Now, they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. So, I mean, the grace is coming from Christ, but it might be received according to your uh, conscience. So, if you're following your conscience sincerely, or in your case, you're following the commandments of the law sincerely, yeah, you can be saved. Now, that doesn't conduce to a complete relativism. I, we still would say the privileged route and, and the, the route that God has, has offered to humanity is, is the route of his son. But no, you can be saved. Uh, even Vatican II says that an atheist of goodwill can be saved. An atheist of goodwill can be saved. An atheist of goodwill can be saved. That when I follow my conscience, I'm following him, whether I know it explicitly or not. So even the atheist, Vatican II teaches, of goodwill can be saved. 
Sadly, the Catholic Church has placed a greater emphasis on ecumenism, that is, bringing all global religions under her authority and control, and less emphasis on spreading the gospel with people who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Furthermore, the Catholic Church, led by Pope Francis, teaches that all religions lead to the same God. This is so harmful and satanic because it provides those in darkness a false sense of security and denies them the opportunity to know the true God, who can redeem them from their sins and shower them with unconditional love that no false gods can. See the link in the description or at the end screen near the end of this video to learn more about the Catholic Church's false teaching on this topic. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe and enable the bell symbol to be notified when we release new videos, which we do weekly. Assist us in getting the end time message to the lost and dying world. Simply watch our videos till the end, then like, share, and comment. Thanks for your support. Our entire discussion has one purpose, and that is to make sure that we understand that people caught up in the Roman system are not saved Christians. They are lost people on their way to eternal hell. We have to continue to evangelize them. We cannot be deceived, we cannot be fooled as if they belong to Christ when in fact they do not. We cannot reach a point now where we redesignate people in the Roman Catholic Church as believers in Christ or we will cut them off from the necessary exposure to the true gospel which alone can bring them salvation. Genuine and discerning believers through all the history of the church and today understand the false priesthood. True believers understand the horrific exaltation of Mary above Christ and even above God. They understand this twisted sacrament of the Mass which uh, attempts to re-sacrifice Christ. True Christians understand the false forgiveness of the confessionals, the money motives behind the invention of purgatory as a way to raise money, uh, people giving money to the church to buy uh, their dead relatives out of this imaginary place called purgatory. The true church has always understood the disastrous harm of indulgences, buying your own way out of purgatory by giving money to the system. The abomination of the worship of idols and relics, prayers for the dead, the perversion of forced celibacy. All of these things have been very clearly heresies and the true church has always understood it. And at the top of the pile, the true church has always understood the Pope as a usurper of the headship of Christ over his church. Giving false hope to atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers is utterly evil. Jesus reprimanded the zealous and hypocritical religious leaders of his day for being a hindrance to those seeking to enter the kingdom of heaven. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Matthew 23, verse 13. The Pope has made an announcement that Christians should not try to convert anybody. Now this is absolutely mind-boggling. This is astounding. The Pope was giving a talk to some high school students in Rome, and one of the students asked the Pope, saying, um, how do you deal with atheists and people of other faiths? The Pope responded, Christians should never proselytize, and that any who do are not truly Christians. He insisted, we're not living in the time of the Crusades. In front of an unbeliever, the Pope goes on to say, the last thing I have to do is to try to convince him. Never. Well, but I thought that's what the Lord told us to do, to try to persuade people for Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. If people don't believe, they're lost. We want to persuade them to believe because without faith, it's impossible for them to be saved. And all they have to do is look forward to is the lake of fire. To say you don't care about persuading people is saying you don't care about the lost or it doesn't matter what you believe. This is just shocking. The Pope goes on to say, a Christian should never try to convince others of the truth of Christianity, which should simply give a testimony of the consistency and wait for others to ask about their faith. You don't do anything proactive. You just try and live the life and be sweet and hope someone is gonna interrogate you about what you believe. That is not what the disciples did. The Pope said, if someone says they're a disciple of Jesus and they come to you with proselytism, 
they are not a disciple of Jesus. Uh, this is an amazing statement on several counts. First of all, it's unbiblical. Jesus tells us that we should proactively go everywhere and preach the gospel to try to persuade people to believe. Whether he realizes it or not, the Pope and his followers are agents of Satan deployed to fool millions, instead of assisting atheists in seeing that they are in spiritual darkness and in desperate need for the light, Jesus Christ, these people are being misled to embrace the false teaching that God will forgive them and admit them to heaven if they have good conscience and do good works. While no one can decide who goes to heaven, God makes it very plain in his word how to see God's kingdom. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. Again, Acts 4, verse 12 states that salvation is found in no other but Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. No one is saved by having a good conscience or doing good deeds. We are saved by God's unmerited favor or grace and through our faith in Jesus Christ, and no one will enter heaven until they completely surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Whether you are a Muslim, an atheist, or an agnostic, God's grace is available to you today. God's love is unconditional, and He longs to shower His love on you if you open your heart to Him. Don't be misled by the Pope.